Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our next video lecture. In this video lecture we're going to be talking about two things. The first is uh, we're going to be implementing a linked list using a linked structure. And the second thing is we're going to design and implement a priority queue using a heap. The first one we're going to code, the second one is going to be uh, like theoretical information, no coding. All right, let's begin. So I have, on the left side, I have um, a board where I can paint and show you some of the things. Uh, and on the right side, I have my uh, IDE. Here we're going to be writing our code of linked list. So I have two classes, two Java files. Uh, the first Java file is our linked list. It's going to contain our linked list. And the second one is used for testing our linked list class. So first of all, before we begin, uh, I'm going to write out all the methods that we're going to be implementing today. So I grouped them into uh, several categories. So first of all, I always like starting with the toString method to just be able to print the con I mean to, to be able to print the object directly uh, and meaningfully. The second one is size to get the size of the linked list clear and is empty. These three methods are kind of convenience methods that make your coding uh, a little bit more intuitive and maybe easy. The second group of methods a category of methods is add first. This method is going to add some element E as a first element to the linked list. And add last is a complementary method to this one, which is going to add the element to the end of the linked list. Remember that linked lists are very good at adding an element to the first position, unlike array lists. And the last method is going to be a method called add, which is going to add some certain element E at the specified index. The third category of methods is our remove. We have remove first, remove last, and remove an element at some certain index. Then we have methods like get first, get last, and get at some certain index. We also have a method called set that's going to take an index of an element and um, the value and it's going to change the element's value to E. The next uh, group of uh, uh, methods is contains. We're going to check if some certain element E contains in a, in a linked list or not. Also we have index of which is going to return the position and last index of. Uh, this method also returns position, but it returns the rightmost position. So you can consider this as you, as, as you are looking at for an element from the left side and you return the first index that you uh, did the first occurrence. This is like looking from the right side and you again return the first occurrence uh, of the element. And the, lastly, we're going to do an iterator method that's going to allow us to write an enhanced for loop or for each loop uh, on our linked list. All right, so we know that linked lists are data structure that contain nodes, right? So we have a node, 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 node. Yeah, let's say three nodes. The first, uh, all of them are connected with some links. So we have links here and we have uh, nodes here and this is going to be a linked list of nodes, basically a linked list. The first element in this linked list is, uh, we call it the head and the last one is tail, right? So let me actually write it as fully, okay? This is going to be like the head and this is going to be like tail. For short, I'm going to just use the letters H and T when I uh, when I'm going to draw them. Linked lists uh, come in several different variations. So this one is single. Uh, this one is single linked list because each node only knows what's next after it. 
when you have a, a link which goes backwards, like a node no also knows which element, uh, which node is like before it. This is called doubly linked list. And there are also circular linked lists. You can look at them in the book, in the chapter, in the subchapter linked list. I think at the end. Let me scroll and find it for you. Here are them. So we have circular linked list. So the last, uh, the tail has an <coughs> tails next is going to be the head. And we have double linked list where we have uh, like links on to both directions, like here. And also we have a circular doubly linked list. So you can go forever in one direction or the other direction. Always you're going to be like in a circle. So today we're going to be doing only the, the singly linked list where we have a reference to the next element. Uh, for a doubly linked list some of the implementations of methods are going to be a little bit easier. All right. Also, um, in order to write our linked list class, we first need to write a class called node. So this uh, circle here represents a node. What is a node? Well, a node is just a, a holder for the data that the linked list stores. So basically, our node is going to have like the data, right? Like the information that it stores in this list and uh, we have a reference to the next element all right so basically there are two things inside a node a reference to the next node and the data all right data also can be a reference if you are storing objects of your own custom class inside a linked list in that case it's going to be a reference but if you store like primitive data types it's going to be like data Actually, all of them are going to be like references because our linked list class is going to be generic. And you know, in generics, uh, uh, the parameter type E, for example, is, um, is a reference type. That's why it's going to store the references uh, to the information we're going to use. When we have a doubly linked list, there is going to be two references, right? So the first one is going to be to the next, uh, this one is going to be to the previous, and we're going to have the data. All right, so this is for doubly linked list, this is for singly linked list. Since we're doing singly linked list, we're going to have this kind of thing. So we're going to write this class inside our linked list class, and it's going to be an inner class. And you know our linked list is a generic type, that's why we add E, and since uh, we're going to be storing elements of type E inside our linked list. Node also should be of type E. So uh, the data is going to be as of type E, and also the reference to the next node is going to be the type of the reference is actually going to be node. That's why uh, it's going to be like this. All right. And we're going to include a constructor. Let me actually do it with a shortcut, like this. And for convenience, let's just include the toString method, the public string toString, where we just return the data that toString. All right, so this is our uh, node class, and it's complete. What do we do next? Well, we agreed, uh, I mean, we discussed that uh, our linked list has two references, head and the tail, like two important variables inside this linked list. So the, the, the head is of type node, so that's why we're going to have private node E head. This is going to be the reference to the, no, uh, the, to the head node. This is going to be the reference to the tail node. Also, we're going to have a data field for the size of the linked list and we're going to store it in, in that integer. Initially, it's going to be zero. So let's include the constructor. I'm going to again use the shortcut. It's Alt Insert in, in Windows. Let's include a constructor that's 
that doesn't take any of these any of these uh, data fields. Uh, so initially, when you cr when we create an empty linked list, our linked list is going to look like head equals tail equals null. Both of them are going to be null. All right. So if head and tail point to null, it means uh, there is no like node inside this linked list. It means it's empty. So we're just going to say size is zero. So yeah, we have our constructor. Now we can construct our linked list. Now let's implement the toString method. All right. And I forgot to mention that uh, the implementation that we're going to write today is going to be different from the implementation from the book and probably we may have some errors uh, it may not be perfect some of the things may be very basic uh, just a, just as a disclaimer uh, we're going to build this uh, linked list class from ground up from zero from scratch and uh, yeah just so you know not to expect a perfect linked list implementation all right Okay, so two string method. So uh, there are a couple of. Um, so we're gonna write uh, uh, if conditions uh, a lot. All right. So there is a special case when our linked list is empty. We we'll just say if head is null and our tail is null. What's gonna happen? It means that our linked list is empty, and we're just gonna return. Uh, the symbols like this, all right? So it means it's empty. Else if, and also we consider when there is one element in our linked list. Uh, so when there is one element, it means head and tail both point to the same element. Let me just show you here. Uh, sorry, what's okay? Let me just show you by an example. So if we have one element, it's going to be head and tail at the same time. So we're just, we can just say if head equals tail, it means it's, uh, there is one element. Also, we could use size is equal one, size equals zero. Uh, I think they should be equivalent conditions. In this case, we just return uh, this symbol plus uh, head the two string plus this symbol. All right. So we also can write tail here because they are the same elements. Uh, when we go to else, it means it's uh, it contains more than one element. And, and in this case, we need to write a loop. Well, how do we write a loop? Let me show you by an example. Let's say that we have uh, three elements in our linked list. Just assume that there is a link between them. How do we loop? We know that this is our head and we know that this is our tail. How do we loop through all the nodes in this linked list? Well, we're just going to create a pointer, all right? So pointer, which is going to point to the head. And we're going to do pointer that next. Next time it's going to point to the second element. We're going to do pointer that next to the third element, pointer that next and we just continue pointer that next infinitely many times. Let's just write it. Node E a pointer equals head. Okay, so we're now we're pointing to the head, and we say while true. Do what? Just move it. Okay, pointer equals pointer dot next. This moves it, but never stops. When do we stop? Well, when do we do next and uh, like the tails next is gonna be null, and this uh, pointer is gonna point to null. It means we should stop, right? So we can just say if pointer equals null, just break the loop, right? Or we can invert this condition and put it here. While pointer is not null, just continue doing pointer that pointer next. And when like pointer that next is null, this loop is going to stop. So basically, this loop is going to uh, traverse through all the nodes in this linked list. All right, uh, now what do we do when we traverse through this linked list? We're just going to say uh, the string result, 
that eventually we're going to return is going to be containing this uh, left square bracket. Each time we get a new element, we're just going to say res plus equals, we add the element pointer that data, that uh, pointer that the string actually, right? Because it's node plus this symbol, comma, all right? And then we do next, and we added all the elements into this string. And uh, we also added an extra comma and the space for after the last element. We just need to remove it and add the closing square bracket. We just return uh, res.substring from 0 until res.length minus 2. We just ignore the last comma and the space and add our closing square bracket. All right. So this should be good. We're going to go back to this toString method. Uh, and we're going to test it after we implement our add, add first method, which is uh, right here. All right. So what is size clearing is empty? The size method uh, returns the size, public in size. It just returns uh, size, right? Uh, public int, uh, sorry, uh, it's the next is clear. Public void clear. Uh, when we do clear, we just say that the head equals tail equals null, right? Because we just want to remove the reference to both head and tail. Since we remove the reference to them, we're not going to have access to these uh, to these nodes, and garbage collector is just going to collect I and mean, remove all these uh, nodes from the memory. So, and the size we need to make the size zero as well. And public boolean is empty. Is our uh, linked list empty or not? We can just say return size equals zero. Now when size equals zero, it's going to be true. It means it's empty. When size is not zero, let's say two, this is going to be false. It means it's not empty. All right, so these four methods are complete. The next method we're going to be doing is add first public void add first so it's gonna uh, we're gonna be adding an element of type e to our linked list so how do we add first all right <clears throat> let's go back to our board here uh, let's say we want to add as a first element. If there are no nodes, if there are no nodes in our linked list, it means uh, the node we're going to add should be the first one, right? So how do we check if there are no nodes? We just say if head is null, right? If head is not pointing to anything and tail is not pointing to anything. Uh, actually, this head is equal equals null is sufficient. Uh, we don't need to write tail null because uh, by our class definition, uh, when our linked list doesn't contain anything, both of them are going to be null, right? So we can just check only for the uh, only for one of the head or tail. Also, we can write size equals zero. But I'm going to stick with this implementation. So in this case, what's going to happen? Both head and tail are going to be uh, pointing to the same node, right? Because like no node, it's going to be added and head and tail are going to be pointing to this one. So what do we do? We just say head equals tail equals new node with data. Okay, we have a constructor that takes an element of type E. And since we added one element, we're going to say size plus plus. And else, what happens when there is already one node in our linked list? It's interesting. All right, so let's say we have one node. Let's say we have two nodes, and we want to add a new element. And uh, this is head, and this is tail. This is head, and this is tail. So what, uh, the element we want to add is going to appear here, right? Because it's the first element, add first. It's going to become the new head, right? It's going to become the new head. And its next is going to be the old head, 
all right it's next is gonna be the old head this one's next is gonna be the old head so we don't have to consider uh, like uh, this is a special case uh, when our linked list has one element we don't have to consider as a special case and since it's very similar to the condition when there are multiple elements in a linked list there so what do we do so first of all we need to create this new node right so we just say node a new node equals new node with, with that data so which one do we do first do we say uh, head equals new node and then we say new node but next equals head do we do that of course not because if we do like this uh, like the new nodes next is gonna be itself right so first of all we need to assign the uh, head to the next to this new node right so it's gonna be like uh, let me actually simulate it let's say we want to add this is head this is tail we want to add a new node we create it after that what do we do we say that it's next is head all right and after that we say that head is actually this new node but not this one all right so that, that this is what we, what, what we do and also we do size plus plus because we added one element but uh, we're doing size plus plus in if and in else uh, in any case we're doing size plus plus it means we just can take this size plus plus out of the uh, if body all right so we have add first let's test our linked list so our linked list of integers I'm, I'm gonna use integers for simplicity let's say list equals new our linked list it created an empty linked list system out print ln list size should be zero system out print ln list is empty should be true and also system out print ln list uh, should just print empty brackets all right zero true empty brackets uh, clear uh, we're gonna test it after we add some elements let's now uh, write a for loop that's gonna run 10 times and we're gonna say list.add first i we're gonna add i as a first element it means it's gonna push all the elements to the right so the numbers are gonna be in descending order 9 8 7 6 system out print ln list all right, so we have all the elements. Uh, let's actually print the list and print print its size as well so to see if the size is growing alongside with the list. Yeah, we can see that initially it's zero elements, one element, two elements. Yeah, everything is working correctly. Let, now let's do clear. Uh, list of clear. And then system out print ln list uh, system out print ln list size and uh, let's do before clear let's do list uh, system out print ln uh, list dot is empty it should be false so false all right we clear and then it's empty size is zero all right all methods seem to be working correctly but remember we're not doing an extensive testing here there we're not testing for the edge cases there are probably some possible situations when our methods behave incorrectly all right but for for beginner understanding of linked lists this should be sufficient all right so we completed add first the next the next method we're going to do is add last data well how do we add an element as last in a linked list again there are two possible conditions two possible cases when there are no elements it's gonna be actually we can just copy the condition from at first when there are no elements 
uh, it's just going to be a new node, right? And also we can just do size plus plus at the end. When there is an element, let's say there is one element and let's say there is two elements. This is head and this is tail. This is head and this is tail. The new element we add is going to be green. All right. So when we add new element, what do we do first? Do we assign this link first or do we do it as a tail? If we assign it as a tail, uh, we, we're, we're going to lose reference to the previous element. That's why first we need to establish a link. So we say this new node, the tails next is going to be this new node. Tails next is going to be this new node. And this new node is going to be tail. All right, this new node is going to be tail. That's it. So first, uh, uh, yeah, we create this node data. And then what do we do? We say that the tail that next equals new node. And then we say that the tail is going to be new node. All right. So these two line, uh, three lines of code are going to ensure that we add elements as last. Let's actually do add last here. It should change the order. It should be from zero until nine in increasing order. If it's working correctly. Yes, it's working correctly. The elements are being added in increasing order. All right. Now let's move on. Uh, the next method we're going to be doing is add last index e public void add. Uh, sorry, it's just add uh, in index and e data. All right. So what do we do in this case? This is a little bit more tricky to do. A little bit more tricky to do. We need to check the index for validity. So how do we check index? So before checking this index, uh, let's first uh, analyze what add does. So when we have our nodes, what does it mean to add to some certain index? We can add an element here. It means it's going to be the new first element. We can add element here in between these two nodes, here and here. All right. This one is very similar to add first. Actually, it's uh, exactly the same as add first. This is exactly the same as add last. So we can consider them as special cases. Also, uh, know that this index is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. And you can already see that our index, index here has to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to the size of this linked list. Otherwise, uh, this is an invalid index. All right, so we can just say if index is less than 0 or this index is bigger than size. In this case, we can throw new array, or do we have list index out of bounds exception? No, array index out of bounds exception. All right. So now we are 100% guaranteed that index is correct. So if index is zero, it means it's the same as at first. We just call at first data. Else, if index is at the last, I mean, it's if it's equal to the size of the linked list, it means it's the same as at last. In all other conditions, it means we are adding somewhere in the middle. Right, so how do we add an element into the middle of a linked list? All right, so uh, since we have only the forward link, let's say we are adding an element here. Uh, if uh, since we since we have only the forward link, we need to kind of put a link here and then a link here, right? So we need to find a place. It means this position here, where we can do this is next is going to be this one, it's next next is going to be this one. Uh, so basically, we need to find a node which is located at 
index minus one. Okay, so this is zero, this is one, this is insertion point two, and index of the node where we need to move until should be index minus one, right? This insertion index minus one. So we need to write kind of a loop which is similar to the loop we wrote in two string. So again, uh, first of all, we create our node, a new node equals new node uh, data. After that, we do uh, some repetition. Um, if um, so, we're going to be initially located at this index, right? So it's going to be like a node e pointer equals head. We need to move it how many times? One times, two times, three times. For a, an insertion index two, we need to move it only once, right? So index minus one times, we need to shift it to the right. So we do while. Uh, we need a counter, right, by the way. Int uh, i equals zero, and while this i is less than index minus one, because we need to repeat it in index minus one times. What do we do? i plus plus, right? So we are guaranteed that this loop repeats i mi index minus one times. What do we do index minus one times? We move this pointer so many times. So we just do pointer equals pointer dot next. All right, so after this loop, we're guaranteed that we are located at this at the node after which the element would be inserted. So what does insertion mean? It means that uh, the new nodes um, next is going to be this nodes next is going to be this this nodes next. It's pointer dot next. And this pointers next is going to be this new node. And after we do this insertion, we just do size plus plus because we have added an element. All right, so let's test our hypothesis here. I mean, test our code here. Where I'm going to remove these guys here. Let's just say list.add first two, three times, and then we're, we're going to add uh, to an index one, an element i. So we should have something like one and zero, one, two, not uh, two. Yes, it's correct. So uh, we add zero at one index, one at one index, two at one index. All right, so each time we add it to the one index, two. So it's now it, they're being added to the second index. To add it all the way as a last element, we just do index as list dot size. All right, so it's going to be like add last. All right, so we can see that they're being uh, added as a last element. Okay, so add is ready. The next uh, method that we're going to work on is remove first, remove last, and remove at index. Public void remove first. Let me just copy it. Remove last. And remove at some certain index i. All right, so what does remove first mean? Removes are actually kind of uh, easier to implement. Uh, but there are some special cases. When um, there is no element in in a list to remove, we just need we can't do anything, right? So we just say if size is zero, you know, yeah. This time we're using size. Uh, throw new no such element exception. Okay. In this case, it means nothing to remove. And if size is one. Let's consider as a special case. If size is one, it means the head and tail are going to be both null. The size is going to be zero. Okay. Else, 
if size is not one it means if it's bigger then what do we do let's look at uh, it graphically so let's say th these are our uh, nodes what does it mean to remove the first element and so this is head it means just assign this as a head and this is going to be lost okay so how do we do we just say head equals head dot next all right so head's next element is going to be the new head and we can safely do size minus minus so this is remove first now let's complete all three remove methods and then test them remove last uh, so here it's kind of like the, the, the first two conditions are same because uh, yeah, they're very identical and when size is bigger than uh, when the size is bigger than one this is a little bit tricky and not similar to remove first let's say there are some elements here yeah, this is going to be our tail so we can't just assign this as a new tail because we can't get the previous element of tail right we can't get the previous element of tail because it it's a single linked list so it means that we need to go up until the last element i mean the the, the element which is before the last element and assign it as a new tail so we need to remove our pointer until this pre-last element so we know how to move our pointer we're just going to create our pointer to head and we're just going to say while um, while pointer.next is not tail yeah, while the pointer's next element is not tail if it is tail it's going to stop we're just going to say pointer equals uh, pointer.next we're just going to move it and we're guaranteed that pointer now is located at the element before the tail after that we're going to we can just say the tail is going to be the new tail is going to be this pointer and tails next is going to be null it's important because tail is uh, tail doesn't have the next element and which which is the size minus minus in this case all right okay should be good now let's do remove at some certain index i this probably is one of the hardest methods to implement uh, in, in a linked list but we're going to do it. There are a couple of special cases. First of all, we need to check this index. So, and it's not unlike um, at uh, at to some certain index i, right? Because now indices should be between zero and size minus two, a uh, size minus one, right? Because it's not in between the elements; it's directly the nodes themselves. So we can just say if the index is bigger than or equal to zero and the index is less than or less than size all right it's a condition when the index is correct when we invert it we're going to get the condition when the index is not correct in this case we can just say uh, throw a new array index out of one exception okay so in this case the index is not valid also, when, when the size of this uh, linked list is zero, it means there are no element to remove. We can just say throw new, uh, no such element exception. All right. And when the index is zero, it's the same as remove first. When index is size minus one, it's the same as remove last. So these are kind of special cases. When size is zero, what do we do? which is do remove first else if size is uh, equal to index minus one sorry not size here should be index index is zero and index is size minus one which is do remove uh, not first but last and in all other conditions, it means we are removing an element from somewhere in the uh, middle of the linked list. So how do we do that? How do we remove this one? 
let's say we want to remove this element here okay this element right here it means that we just need to make this link okay we need to make we need to establish this link it means we need to go and up until this node until this uh, index all right so again we're going to start from the head are gonna we're gonna have have a pointer okay also we need to have uh, some variable for counting how many times we're doing this moving operation in i equals zero and what we're gonna do we're gonna say while true for now what do we do pointer equals pointer dot next and i plus plus okay uh, so i is gonna store uh, how many times we repeat this operation and pointer pointer that next it uh, repeats this movement okay so let's actually draw another case all right so let's say we want to remove this element here it means we need to move up until this place right so we started here this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Remove three means move zero, one, two times, right? So remove four means move three times, right? So here we can just write remove index uh, while i is less than index minus one, all right? So while index minus one, move it. So this guarantees that our pointer is now located at this position before the element which we need to remove and this pointers uh, this elements next is going to be this one all right so how what do we do we just say pointer dot next equals pointer you're gonna like what like this one pointer next next it's like c plus plus also we don't forget to do size minus minus we don't do size minus minus here and here because they are already implemented inside the method remove first and remove last so this should be good let's see how it works so uh, we have our list let's just print it for uh, to just see okay there are 13 elements uh, we're gonna say while not uh, list that is empty we have this is empty method while it's not empty we're just gonna remove the elements from the beginning list dot remove first and system print ln list okay all right, so we we are able to remove the elements from the beginning. Let's do remove last. All right, so we can remove the elements last, and let's just say while size while list dot size is bigger than let's say three. Okay, up until the last three elements, we're gonna remove at index one. Okay, always we're gonna remove an element at index one. So here, two is removed, this two is removed, this zero is removed, this one is removed, two is removed. It seems like it's working correctly because the zeroth element is being preserved. All right, very good. Now we're on, uh, almost we're almost done. Get first, get last, get set. So we need to do get first now. You can click this uh, Control Shift and minus, and it's going to minimize these uh, methods. Public um, e get first. So it just basically returns the data which is stored in the, as the first element. Uh, we can just return head dot data. It's very simple. Public e get last. This is also very simple. It's just tail dot data. Okay and get at some certain index public e and get at some certain index well we know this uh, it's, uh, so in order to get an element at some certain index we just need to move this pointer to that index right it's actually very simple to this uh, code we wrote here I'm just gonna copy it okay copy and paste it here so we have a pointer to head, i is at zero, but uh, we repeat not index minus one times, but index times, because we need to move up until that position. So if it's like three, we do one, two, three, okay? 
and also I forgot to do that we need to check uh, if the index is correct so we can actually take uh, this two conditions. We can also take this one because if there is no element to get we should like throw no such element exception. It, it will it will make sense. It will make sense. Alright, so here what do we do next is we're just gonna return pointer that data because our pointer have has moved up until that position let's test this get first and I'm sure get first and get last work correctly let's just see get method we're just gonna write a loop that's gonna run up until the list size all elements in system out print ln list get i okay we're gonna get each element one by one and print them so we started with two, and let's actually print them on a single line so we can compare our initial list and our printed values. All right, looks correct. There are 13 values. Get is working correctly. Now let's do the set method. Yeah, public void set uh, int index, and there's some data e of type E. So it's very similar to this one because we need to move up until that place, right? And also we do the same index checking. But we don't do if the size is zero because we're actually we, we need to do no such element exception because we're setting not adding. It's different from adding because uh, actually we're changing the element. Adding is going to insert but set is not going to insert. It's going to change the value of the existing node. So we moved, and what do we do? We just say pointer that data equals uh, data. So let's t test this set method. We're just gonna do uh, list dot set index i to value i. Okay, so each element is just gonna take their index value. It should be like zero, one, two, three, four, up until twelve. All right, it's correct. Okay, so these four L L uh, methods are done. These four methods are done. Contains index of, last index of. Public boolean contains. And I'll just return false for now. Public int uh, index of, return minus one public int last index of return minus one okay so contains actually takes the data right it, it, re it returns true if our list contains this data otherwise it returns false so how do we do that well uh, we just need to traverse through our uh, linked list we're gonna have a pointer to the head right and while this pointer is not equal to null. We're just gonna do pointer equals pointer dot next. All right. So basically, it's gonna travel through each node one by one. What do we do when we while we're moving? We say if pointers data equals to the data, we just return true. Right. And if when this loop finishes and we uh, like don't go inside this if loop at least once, right? It means there is no such element, and we can safely return false. Contains. Uh, we can just do call this method test list system of print uh, list that contains i. So basically, it doesn't contain. Uh, 10, 12, and uh, 10, 11, and 12, right? Yes, all other elements are pre present here. There's, all of them are true. Okay, now let's do index of. It also takes uh, the data, and now we need to return the index of the element. So, what do we do here? So, hmm. 
let's say we have an index which is equal to zero. Okay, let's say it's not index but i. And we're going to have a pointer. This, this is going to be the result that we're going to return. Okay. And we're going to have a pointer to the head. And we're going to move our pointer all the way until the end. While pointer doesn't equal to null, we're going to do pointer equals pointer.next. And while we're doing it, we're also going to increment i, right? We're also going to increment i. And we're going to say if uh, pointer data that equals the data we're, we're given, we can safely return i because we found it. But what if we didn't find it? If we didn't find it, we usually return minus one, right? We usually return minus one. Uh, so, is it gonna work? Let's just test it. List index of. So, since we're getting all the elements one after another, it should be. The second element, I mean, wait a second. So we're checking i, right? 0 is located at 3, 1 is located at 4, 2 is located at 0. Yeah, it's like index of, it returns the first occurrence. A 10 is not here, it returns minus 1, 11, 12. It, it looks like it's working correctly. It looks like it's working correctly. All right. Looks like it's working correctly. Last index of. So here we also have some data. So last index of, uh, we're going to have almost the same implementation. Let me actually copy it. It's going to be almost the same but different. Okay. So um, we're going to have another element called index that's going to store the index of the variable. Instead of returning it, we're just going to say index equals i. We're going to record it. Okay. So since we have re a return, it's going to break in the first occurrence of the element when it's found. So it's like uh, the first occurrence from the left. When we don't break, it's going to be the last element, right? It's going to be the last element. And we can just safely return here the index that we just found. All right, it should be good. Last index of. Now last index of for two should be zero, one, two, three, four, five. It should be five instead of zero. The third element should be zero. I'm mean, sorry, five. It should be five. Five, yeah. All right, it's very good. Okay, what are some uh, other methods that we need to do? The last one is iterator iterator so iterator is actually a method from the iterable interface so that's why we're going to do implements iterable iterable e sorry we don't have this iterator let's just remove it it asks us it says an error yeah it asks us to implement this uh, abstract method called iterator public iterator e iterator so from here we need to return an iterator okay from now we can just return null and we don't have any mistakes so how do, this is an interface it means we need to implement uh, we need to write a class that implements this interface public uh, let's call our class uh, our linked list iterator sorry not public class yeah Plus our linked list iterator implements uh, iterator, and we need to implement its abstract methods. I'll insert implement methods two abstract methods has next and next has next gives us true when there when there is a value to be returned. Okay. Next returns the element 
that uh, that we can uh, net, next just returns the next element. Okay, so here we need to have a node, private node. Uh, let's so each time we call this method, it's going to return us new iterator. It means it's basically uh, going to be an iterator that always starts from beginning. Okay, so it's going to be head. Sorry. And pointer equals head. Okay, the head of the of this linked list. Why we can write head? Because this is an inner class. It has this the access to this data uh, field called head. Uh, pointer head has next means what? If this pointer is not null, it means we have an element to read, right? If it's like zero elements, it means it's null, false, right? If it's at least one element, it means it's true, okay? So, well, how do we return the next element? First of all, uh, next means also it moves this iterator by one position to the right. It means we're going to do pointer equals pointer that next. But before moving, we need to return the value which is at this pointer, right? So we can just re return should be the last uh, statement. Usually it's the last statement. That's why we first save it uh, in a variable, and then we move it, and then we return this data. So this should complete our linked list iterator, and when the method called iterator is Invoked, we just return new our linked list iterator. And this should complete our iterator method. Let's test it. So now instead of using this indexed, uh, indexed notation, we, we can just use enhanced for loop. For each integer i in our list, we can just system out println i. And you can see that our list is being printed. All right, so this completes our implementation of linked list class. We wrote approximately 280 lines of code. All of the code is here. And these are the methods that we have completed. Yeah, I think that's it. Now let's talk about the uh, yeah the next thing that we wanted to talk about is priority queue. Well, priority queue in Java is implemented using a data structure called heap. You can see it here. Uh, heap. Uh, heap is a data a special data structure. Uh, it's also used in heap sort. Basically, what is a heap? A heap is a data structure uh, that uh, it's actually like a binary tree that arranges its data in some special order. In some special order. And I think this could be uh, a nicer example. So you can see that each node actually has two childs, left child and right child, left, right, left, right, left. Some of them might not have any childs at all, some of them might have only one child, and this one is called root for these two ch children, for both of its children it's called like root or parent. So for a heap, there is a condition called heap condition, where the parent is always bigger than its children, right, so 50 is bigger than 30 and 15, 15 is bigger than 10 and 5, 30 is bigger than 19 and 20, 19 is bigger than 2. So heap condition is true for this uh, particular uh, arrangement of values. And if we write it in, in a list, it's going to be like 50 and then 30, 15, and then 19, 20, 10 and 50, 10 and 5, and then 2. So basically you just take all the elements one by one from left to right on each level, from level 0, from level 1, from, from level 2, from, from level 3, and write them down in a linear fashion, and you get this list, okay? And this list in this special arrangement is called heap, okay? 
um, so this priority key uses this heap. Why does it use heap? Well, because uh, the first element in the heap is always the maximum. You know, it's always the maximum. That's why, uh, since we're using priority queue, the highest priority element is always going to be the first one. That's why uh, when we do deck de queue, it's just going to be linear time. And queue is going to be and queue is going to be log uh, logarithmic time, and get size is going to be linear time. It's going to make this priority queue very fast. For any given list with some random allocation of elements, in order to convert it into this uh, con uh, into an arrangement where uh, the elements are allocated correctly, yeah, the heap condition is true. To make the heap condition true for any given arrangement of values in the list, it takes a logarithmic time. So let's say that the, the values are randomly located in order to make them satisfy this heap condition. The algorithm takes logarithmic time. That's why it's very efficient to use heaps in priority queues. All right, so thank you guys for your attention. Uh, today we talked about two things. We implemented uh, a linked list using uh, a linked structure completely from scratch. We implemented all the methods. As 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 said as I said before, this linked list implementation is not perfect. I am 100% sure that it is not perfect. There are many things that could be improved in our implementation, and it's also uh, different from the implementation from the book. Uh, the second thing we talked about is uh, a priority key using heap. Uh, its uh, implementation is very simplistic because it, like, kind of like we are using a ready-made data structure called heap. If we had to implement the heap data structure, it would be a little bit more difficult, uh, and it's a story for another video lecture. Okay. Thank you guys for your attention. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Thank you for your patience. Have a great day and good luck. See you guys.